Seen here, the fourth simulated abort test of the Apollo spacecraft, designated A-003, took place on May 19, 1965. The footage reveals the sudden surprise that researchers encountered on that day when an actual abort situation that occurred during the assessment tested the launch escape system under less controlled conditions than intended. Everything went spectacularly wrong and then spectacularly right, as the command module successfully detached from the disintegrating Little Joe 2 booster before landing safely thanks to its parachutes. Goals The Apollo abort tests sought to assess the capabilities of the launch escape system to determine if it could successfully land a spacecraft crew on the ground in case of an emergency, a mandatory qualification in order to obtain a human-rated launch certification. The A-003 mission was intended to demonstrate the performance of the escape vehicle at its maximum possible abort altitude. A similar emergency launch vehicle had been used on the A-002 mission. The test vehicle was made up of a boilerplate command and service module designated BP-22, while the launch escape system was the same that would be used throughout the Apollo program and was built by Lockheed Propulsion. It was intended to save the crew from emergencies such as failure of the launch vehicle, failure of the guidance system, or an unexpected fire on the launch pad while still on the ground. The system could be set off by one of three wires running down the outside of the launch vehicle, which would activate if the signal was lost. It could also be activated manually by the commander. Once activated, the system would light a solid fuel escape rocket and open a cannered system to guide the command module away from the launch vehicle. It would then land by means of a parachute. This test saw a refined Earth landing system that approached what was planned for production, as well as the addition of a forward heat shield jettisoning system. The program was initially intended to be carried out at the Eastern Test Range in Cape Kennedy, Florida but because of other important launches taking place there, it was ultimately decided to execute the tests at the White Sands Missile Range. One of the reasons White Sands was selected was the more affordable land recovery of the launch escape vehicle and any other separating parts. Testing was a collaboration between the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas, and the contractors Convair and North American Rockwell, who had worked on the launch vehicle and the spacecraft, respectively. The staff of the White Sands Missile Range provided safety procedures, radar systems, video and photography, telemetry data, recovery operations, and other necessary elements. Little Joe 2 The single-stage solid propellant rocket used for the test was designated Little Joe 2. It used booster motors originally designed for the recruit sounding rocket and a first stage sustainer engine created for the Scout family of orbital launch rockets. The rocket's first version, the Little Joe 1, had been integrated into the testing of the launch escape system used on the craft for the first human spaceflight by the United States, the Mercury No. 7. Metal fabrication for the Little Joe 2 was completed by 1963. The vehicle was built to match the diameter of the planned Apollo service module and to be appropriate for the length of its rocket motors. The vehicle also had aerodynamic fins sized to ensure stability, and for added flexibility, it could fire its motors sequentially and in multiple stages to satisfy multiple mission profiles. Structural proving tests were reduced and a number of components were taken from proven reliable parts of other aerospace projects to minimize costs and quality tests. The finished rocket saw a simplification that reduced construction time and cost to give the program its first reasonably priced launch test vehicle. Before the 1965 test, several other preliminary tests were carried out with the Little Joe 2. In 1963, a qualification test vehicle launch was conducted carrying a dummy payload made of aluminum in the shape of the command module with a non-working LES to prove that the rocket would work for future tests. A first completed version was then tested on May 13, 1964 for the A-001 mission where it successfully performed an abort using the LES. 
The A002 mission saw it launched once more in December of 1964 to test the launch escape system with stresses on the spacecraft similar to those expected during the launch of Saturn 1B or Saturn V. The fourth test was intended to assess the system at the highest altitude possible within the realms of the test vehicle. Test The A003 mission was conducted on May 19, 1965, starting at 6.01 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. It only took 2.5 seconds after liftoff for the launch malfunction to manifest, sending the vehicle out of control. Before second stage ignition, the launch vehicle began to break up due to the roll it had entered. Instead of the planned high altitude abort, the system was activated at low altitude. The cannered surfaces deployed from the launch escape system survived the harsh circumstances, while the high roll rate caused by the malfunction, around 260 degrees a second, actually allowed the launch escape vehicle to stabilize in a tower forward attitude. This position allowed it to overcome the expected disruption that should have been caused by the canards. Simulations made after the flight confirmed that the canards would have been ineffective at a high roll rate if not for the unexpected stabilization. They would, however, work as intended at the limit roll rate of the Saturn Emergency Detection System, which was 20 degrees per second. Despite the accident, the spacecraft emergency systems operated as intended. The command module heat shield was protected by the cover of the booster, and it was jettisoned at low altitude. The hard portion of the protective cover of the booster was kept intact until it met the ground. Both of the parachutes inflated correctly, even under all of the rolling and forward movement. The command module was then stabilized and correctly oriented so the main parachutes could be released. The desired altitude of 120,000 feet was not reached due to the early breakup of the launch vehicle, but the unexpected circumstances provided data on the success of a low-altitude abort, which happened at only 12,400 feet while rapidly rolling. The entire accident has since been attributed to an electronic failure, and the BP-22 boilerplate that survived the incident is currently displayed at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas.